I am drawing a wet salt video finally. This is going to be about the last 10 days of sales. I'm using the dates January 27 to February 5. And just to make it easy on myself, the first sales you're going to see are the most recent, going back 10 days with a big surprise sale at the end. Well, it was a surprise to me. So I'd be interested in hearing, do you actually need to see me down here? Because I'm going to be looking at my notes. I'm going to be looking out the window. I'm going to be looking everywhere other than um, at the camera, as I should. So if I don't actually need to be in the corner, I could just show you what, I'm, what I've sold. So it would be great to hear because that would be so much easier if you don't need to see my face. Now this is my better side, so I need to... I need to do this most of the video so you can see my good side. Oh, Lord. Okay, get on with it. So my sales, I'll be real honest, my sales have been, they were on a steady decline from about the week before Christmas uh, down through, they started to climb again uh, probably about a week ago. And I expected that around the holidays, but I really thought that January would pick up quicker because it has for me in the past. And I look at, on eBay, I look at my 30-day rolling sales total and love to track that every day to see if it's going up or going down or staying about the same. And right now, I'm at about 40% of my October 30-day average sales. So that sucks. And my eBay sales, seller performance page tells me that I'm down most days between 25 and 35% from a month ago and from a year ago. So kind of a bummer, but the world is really uncertain right now. And also, I might just be offering a lot of crap. So once I get all that cleared out, things will pick up, right? So what did I sell? So I want to tell you the price you'll see sold for on eBay, it shows the listed price, not an offer price. So I will tell you that what I actually sold it for. I also want to point out that I charge for shipping on every item. And I set up my shipping so that I don't ever lose money on shipping. I sometimes make a, a few cents and sometimes make more than a dollar. So that can affect whether I accept an offer or not because it gets me a little closer to the price I want. But I will tell you how long I had the item, what I paid for it, and what I sold it for. Okay, so this first piece is just an ordinary Ariel leather shoulder bag. It's leather and navy blue and silver, so I thought it was kind of pretty. It's a little bit smaller than a tote bag, but it's a pretty big shoulder bag. I bought this two months ago for $3, and I sold it on an offer of $12.74. So I did net a profit, and I made a sale, which is always good. The next item is this Lauren Ralph Lauren cardigan. Very thick and chunky. Super thick and chunky. It, I'm kind of glad to see it gone because it took up a lot of space in one of my storage bins. I paid 72 cents for it three months ago. Got it at the Goodwill outlet or bins. It's got a toggle button. It was a wool blend. I had a lot of offers on it for like $12, $15. And it was early in sweater season, so I just waited. I got an offer or I sent out an offer for $32.24, and that was accepted. So $0.72 cents into $32 is pretty good. This I've had for a year. It's a vintage blouse, Dorothy Shulman, or, or platinum. Um, you'll actually find quite a few platinum vintage blouses sold, but this one didn't attract much interest. It, it's chiffon with a crossover and asymmetrical hem and paisley. So I paid $2.49 for it a year ago and accepted an offer of $14.99. Here is a Ralph Lauren men's button-up shirt, which I would never have picked this up except for the size. It's a 4XB. Big shirt. It actually says big shirt, I think, on the label. 4XB Big. It was a seersucker summer shirt. Um, I've had it for five months, paid $2.99. I sent out offers, and $18.74 was the sold price on that one. So big sizes, um, like I said, I wouldn't have picked this up in an ordinary uh, size because Ralph Lauren button-ups are 
everywhere, but um, it did sell in the big size. This is the last piece of a bunch of cookware that I picked up. Paid $4.80 for it. I have already sold a three-quart saucepan with egg poacher, a nine-inch skillet with a lid, and this was the last piece. It's Aristocraft from West Bend. Kind of unique because it's square. Upper, upper rim with a round bottom. This sold, uh, I finally got an offer of $18 and I wanted it gone. Takes up a lot of room in my very small bin of hard goods. And I made probably a buck and a half on shipping. So, Aristocraft. Some of the other pieces sold more in the line of $30 to $40. So, the skillet, not so much. This, I think, was in one of my haul videos. It's an older marmot jacket, polar tech fleece, a puffer a little bit, and a full zip. But like I said, it's older. And I paid $3.93 for it five months ago. And I sent out offers, and somebody bought it for $29.25, which is great. Um, I'm really paying attention to making offers on all my winter coats because I would like them gone out of my closet very soon. Although we're in the depths of it here now. It was nine degrees yesterday, which is so strange for us. And it's been snowing for five days. So glad to see this marmot jacket go out the door. So my week sale, or the 10-day the sales period here, was $800. Um, which is, like back in November and October, that would have been a little lower than normal. Right now, $800 is a little higher than normal. Unfortunately, the $800 was affected by this next item. Because for my clothing sales, I really only had about $500 in sales. So this item is an anomaly, and I have to keep that in mind when I'm looking at my sales totals. This was uh, one of my husband's old cameras, a Nikon uh, digital SLR. I put it up on auction. It was the camera and two lenses and the strap and the remote. I put it up on auction, and I also had a buy it now price for three twenty nine. What that means is if someone wants to buy it now, they can do that for that price. No offers are, are entertained. But if someone makes even one bid, then the buy it now price goes away. So this sold for my buy it now price of $329.99. And I actually looked up the start and end time of the listing. It sold in 14 minutes. Now, part of me wants to think, Heidi, you didn't ask enough. But no, if somebody saw it and bought it, and that was the price I wanted, it was exactly the right price. So never second guess your pricing. The comps that I looked at, this camera sold for between $250 and $350 over the last 30 days. So $329 plus shipping was a great deal. Um, I even made like a dollar profit on shipping when I added insurance. This shipping that you're seeing here is not what the buyer paid. That is, um, if Heidi had shipped it to Heidi, that's what I would have paid. The buyer was in Florida and actually paid over $20 for shipping. So it sure is fun to find something laying around the house. My husband is saving up for a new lens, so this money's going to go toward that. The next item is a cabbie jacket. It is, as they say, old label cabbie. It's the Ryder Moto Jacket. It's cute, knit, quilted, oatmeal. I thought it was cute. I bought this in August of 2019. So, no, it's not cute, Heidi. I paid $1.99 for it. I put it in my clearance sale. I went through my eBay store and identified all the items that were over a certain age, and I added them to the store category of clearance. So then I could go into the sales promotion area, choose all the clearance items that were marked in that category, and put them all on sale. And I put them on big sale, like 65% off. So this sold at the clearance price of $7. I paid $1.99, but I've had it for almost 18 months. So goodbye. Here is a Sundance Safari or Utility Jacket. I bought this seven months ago for $5.99. $5.99 is kind of the upper end of what I pay for things. 
but it was Sundance and it was a great olive green and a really great utility or army or safari jacket. So I thought it would go pretty quick. I ended up finally accepting an offer of $25 for it plus shipping. I hope they're very happy because it is pretty cute. This you saw in a haul video recently. Or I showed you about Nordic Wear, Bakeware. I picked up this cake lip pan for $2.49. And I listed it and it sold in one day for my asking price of $24.99 plus shipping. So when I told you to go check out the Bakeware and look for Nordic Wear, it turns out I was right. There were five others for sale and mine sold in one day because I've got a great picture and I list, I gave the, I showed all the angles and the brand and uh, it sold very quickly. It was kind of fun making a box to fit that in. I hope it gets there safely. <coughs> Excuse me. This is ancient. I've had this for 16 months. It's Kenneth Cole Reaction, which I generally, I don't think I've ever picked up one since. I paid 87 cents for it at the bins. It's a cute summer top. It sold for $10.99 plus $5.49 shipping. Probably made $2 on the shipping. So that was cute. And it was kind of a neat window pane. I guess I can't really show it. But it was tensile and soft. I don't have a lot of photos with that one. That was weird. Didn't do a good job there. Do as I say, not as I do. This I know I showed you in a haul video. It's a vintage acrylic sweater with a Nordic or Scandinavian design. This sold through the Global Shipping Program. I paid $3.38 for it. I received an offer of $27, which I accepted. So I hope they really enjoy that. That went to someone in the United Kingdom. I find that the funkier vintage, not that it's just like an old classic vintage, but the stuff that's... Um, in style again now, but it's cooler to have it be old than, than the new version. Um, frequently, I sell things like that to Asia or to Europe. So keep that in mind. If you're not on the Global Shipping Program, you might want to sign up. Here is a Bowden sweater dress, size 8. It was a great uh, classic navy blue with a cable down the front. I sold this twice. The first person said they loved it but they didn't like the way it fit them. Sweater dresses can be clingy, am I right? You probably need a full Spanx underneath, or I would. I actually should wear a wetsuit underneath a sweater dress if I really wanted to be smooth. But uh, it sold the first time for full price, and the second time it sold on an offer for $24. But I paid two forty nine dollars for it, so not bad. And I've had it for a year and already sold it once and got it back, so... Hopefully, I think that that one will stick. Here's a very old Patagonia. It's um, kind of that spongy, um, not fuzzy fleece material, but like spongy. And uh, with a mock neck, thumb rolls. I said the inside was pilly, otherwise nice condition. I soaked the heck out of this to get the white all sparkly and clean and nice again, which I succeeded in doing. I paid $3.93 for this five months ago, and I accepted an offer of $20. Of course, I would pick that up again. I always pick up Patagonia, even when it's plain and ordinary, because people look at it, and I like getting people looking at my stuff. <clears throat> Here is a pair of Seven for All Mankind dojo jeans with what they call the crystal pockets, but a lot of the crystals were missing. I've had these for six months. I paid $5, and I accepted an offer of $24 plus shipping. So they were also kind of a weird denim. They weren't your classic, just, you know, dark wash. They were, I don't know. I don't even know what you call that, but it's got like the stripiness in it. You see what I mean? So I, I generally don't buy a lot of jeans, and I wouldn't do these again. Here's a postmark anthropology shirt with horses on it very cute at first I thought that blue stuff was stains but there's blue things here and there everywhere isn't that strange so um, it's a postmark 
You know what the postmark label looks like. It was an extra small. It was called the Forest Fete. Fate? Forest? I don't know. Don't say words you don't understand. I paid a dollar for this. I had it for six months. I accepted a $12 offer. When sales are slow, I will accept just about any crappy offer you send me. Here is a Foot Joy Dry Joys uh, men's rain jacket, short sleeved. It was um, marked with um, this little logo on the sleeve, which is the Biltmore Country Club, somewhere in the south. I'm not sure. Not the famous Biltmore, but a different one. I purchased this for three forty nine eight months ago, and I accepted an offer of twenty two dollars to get it gone. I could have waited one more golf season, and I might have gotten a little more, but I thought that a short sleeve golf jacket is the epitome of strange. If it's raining, don't you want your whole body covered up? I need a sip of something. It looks like I'm drinking Starbucks, but we use the reusable cups, and we use them at home. It's plastic. Makes me feel more like I'm splurging when I'm just drinking plain old Keurig coffee. Here's a pair of Levi's 515 Bermuda shorts. Cute. They had sewn on cuffs. Let's see if I can show you that. The cuffs were rolled and tacked at the sides and they were a size 12 high rise. I paid $1.99 for those two months ago and I accepted an offer for 17 Very cute. I'm looking at shorts every time I go to the thrift store now. And I'm really not finding much. So people haven't yet cleaned out their shorts drawer in anticipation of spring. I think there'll be a lot there because none of the shorts that we wore last year are going to fit us this year. I know you saw this very in a very recent haul. I think it was my last haul video. It's an Athleta whatever skirt. Skirt. It's a knee length skirt with a skirt with the shorts inside. I listed this. Um, I paid $3.99 and I listed it for three days and it sold for full price, $29.99. So I meant it when I told you that these athletic skirts are really great stuff. Wow, we're sailing along here. Hopefully you haven't fallen asleep. Here's another Foot Joy Dry Joys jacket. This is a women's rain jacket. I purchased this just two weeks ago for $3.38. And I sold it on an offer of $24. And that went in, anytime you see $7.99 for my shipping, that means I used a padded flat rate envelope, which I pay now $7.56 for. So make 40 cents. I had it at $8.49 for a while, but I didn't like that. I like the $7.99 better. So if they did just go up, we were paying $7.99. 52 and now it's 756 that four cents is probably not going to kill me so foot joy you can also always easily spot it in the store because they tend to there at the back of the neck they have the fj so that is a quality golf brand to look for this i don't know why i bought it but i bought it in march of 2019 it's two, two years old Thank goodness I put it in my clearance sale. Somebody paid me $3.50 for it. I paid $0.69 cents for it. And I think because I probably made 2 bucks on shipping, <laughs> I did come out in the black. But, man, why I bought a Kate Young for Target dress, I probably thought, oh, it's cute. That's not good enough. Here's a Flax by Jean Engelhart, linen top. Very basic, v-neck button-up. I bought this five months ago for a dollar. And I sold it in uh, for uh, an offer of $28. Very pretty. I always get flax unless it's been destroyed. You can sell it for something, even if uh, it isn't 50 bucks. But 28 is pretty good. Okay, here is a men's fleece. Cloudvale is the brand. See if I can zoom in. 
Cloudvale is no longer in operation, but people liked their stuff and are still looking for it. I actually found two Cloudvale fleeces, probably donated by the same individual, and um, gave them a nice sweater shave, and one of them sold. I picked this up six months ago for four forty nine, and I sold it on an offer for 20 Cloudvale. So if you can get it very cheap, even though um, it's not sold at retail anymore, people still like it and, and are looking for it. Here was a major mistake I made back in July of 2019. I was dabbling in men's dress shirts. I don't even remember who I was watching on YouTube that um, sold a lot of men's dress shirts. And boy, either that market has changed a lot or I just don't understand the market. But now I rarely do men's dress shirts. But I found a bunch of Charles Terwitt, like six or eight in a row. Charles Terwitt shirts are excellent quality. Where's the tag? Well, you can't, I don't, can't even see the tag. Charles Terwitt. Um, they're excellent quality. Um, I went through and picked out the ones that were in nicest condition. They were $1.99 each, and I think I bought four or five. Some of them had French cuffs, such as this one. So I took a pair of my husband's cuff links. They're actually not his. They were his grandfather's, and they're mink on the other side. This is the back of the cuff link that you're seeing here. But I put them in so you could see what it looked like with a cuff link. And they sat and sat and sat and sat. So I put them in my clearance. I think I sold one way back when I first listed them. But uh, I paid $1.99, and this one sold for $4.55, and the next one, $5.60. So, no, don't, Heidi, don't do men's dress shirts anymore. I guess if it was, you know, oh, Hugo Boss, I would do that. Not Boss Hugo Boss, but just plain Hugo Boss. I did pick up one of his dress shirts, and that went quickly for money. So just a couple items left. This is vintage John Cariano, which I'd never heard of. Made in the USA. You can see that. It's a wool poncho with a velvet collar. Very heavy, very long, beautiful. So vintage John Caruana. I thought that this would be popular with someone in the log and look set or someone who needed a warm wool poncho. Maybe they were going to Scotland. I don't know. I'm making shit up. Anyway, I paid $3.18 for this four months ago and I accepted an offer of $36.75. I was attracted to it because it was wool, because it was a poncho, because it was very big, velvet collar, Nice quality vintage. So I think that turned out well for $3.18 into $36. Remember, one of my first videos, I showed you this crazy snake print blazer from Paper White four months ago is when I bought it. And I accepted an offer of $24. So somebody's going to go crazy this spring or look fabulous in their Zoom call. And my last item was actually a Poshmark sale. And I'm always joking that I sell on eBay and I list on Poshmark, but I don't actually sell there. eBay has made it very difficult to sell um, shapewear. They tend to classify it as underwear. And I haven't figured out a category I can put it in that it then doesn't say, no, you can't list that here. You can't sell that on eBay. Because this is not underwear any more than a any tank top or camisole or sports bra or whatever, right? I understand that some people wear shapewear bottoms without any, shall we say, protection. But this is a tank top, but eBay wouldn't let me list it. It's also Assets by Spank, Spanks, which is um, a, a more affordable line. So I don't think I'm going to be picking up Assets anymore. And I'm going to be really careful about Spanx. If they're leggings, you can sell them. But if they're just shapewear, eBay is giving us a lot of trouble because they're trying to prevent underwear sales, which I get. That's creepy. So sold it for $12 and 
Poshmark sent me, I think, a whole $7.05 or something absurd. But it was good to get a little P word in my sales report this month. So that's my what's sold video. Hopefully, if you were sleeping, hey, 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 wake up, wake up. Video's over. But I had a little bit of fun. And I finally did something that I promised you I would do. So do the YouTube thing. Subscribe and like and put a comment. Wait, put a comment. And let me know if this little box really needs to be here. Or we can just skip the whole Heidi's face in the corner thing if I do a future What's Old video. Okay. See you next time, kids. Bye.